So we are here quasi at the entrance of the exhibition Tersolio by the two Portuguese artists, Romaria Guzmão and Pedro Paiva, two artists from Lisbon. This is their first kind of major exhibition, a survey that covers about 20 years of the work that they have done together as a duo. First, before we, we go into the, the work itself, maybe a few words of introduction. Tersolio. Tersolio is uh, the title of the exhibition. Tersolio is what happened to your eyes when you have a, either like an infection or a deformation in your eyes that affect your, your perception. So it's really something about, um, let's say about science, perception and vision, which in a way is the perfect entry to their show, to their exhibition and to their art, as this is exactly what it is about. Science, in a way, perception, absolutely, and the structure of vision, of creativity, of what we see, how we see it, and why we, we see it. When you enter this exhibition, few things to keep in mind. You have almost three exhibitions in one. One exhibition dedicated to their film work, one exhibition dedicated to the work with sculpture that they do, and uh, one exhibition uh, dedicated to the work uh, in photography that Gushmo and Paiva are also doing. We discovered that everything is connected. You will see images like the one behind me with the washing machine, which is a photograph that you will see back as a film. Of course, with this idea that the washing machine is a camera and the photography, the washing machine is the film and the image. The exhibition is divided in few parts. You would also have, as part of the exhibition, you will go down, important not to miss that, uh, the last chapter of this work, which is installed in the second level of our uh, parking garage, uh, almost playing on this notion of a cave. Uh, Plato's cave, if you want, which is totally also part of, of what they're interested in. You will see that this notion of cave, of darkness, of camera obscura, is also at the center of what they do. So visiting Tersolio by Gushmo and Paiva is also a very, it's a, it's a peculiar, exhibition experience. These three or four part of the exhibition that I described almost mimic the conception of what a museum can be. It's also almost a museum in a museum. But what kind of museum? When you enter this exhibition, it might be a little bit like, you might have the feeling that you are also visiting a science and discovery museum. You will, are going to see films, about quasi-scientific experiment that you could do. You could have, for instance, if you go to Palais de la Découverte in, in Paris, you can see film about the cosmos, you can see film about nature, you can see film that are very close to uh, anthropological film. There's something in the entire exhibition that seems to bring all the works together, whether it's film, sculpture, or photography. For instance, the notion of time is extremely important, but not necessarily the time we know, linear time, but uh, a very uh, peculiar approach of uh, the experience of time, a distorted experience of time. The artists, Gushma and Paiva, work on their uh, apparatus, on the camera, on the projector, to actually almost provide a, a slow motion experience of time. Some of the images that you will experience are almost frozen image, almost creating an ambiguity between what is film and what is photography. Another part of what brings all these works together is that very often you have the feeling that the artists are unfolding an attempt to reinvent the first film to reinvent the first sculpture, to reinvent what photography can be. For instance, there is absolutely no pixel in this exhibition. It's a pixel-free 
exhibition. There is absolutely no digital image. All the images that they are doing are analog. Uh, they shoot in 16 millimeter, 8 millimeter. When they do photography, when they work with photography, they almost reinvent uh, the process of photography as if with film, with photography, with sculpture. They would be in this position, they would embrace this attitude of reinventing the medium, whatever it is, from day one to start anew. For instance, the body of photography behind me, titled Tartan, are almost, the, not the copy, but the appropriation of very, if not the first, attempt to make color photography just using light and pattern and angle of light in order to create these, uh, these patterns. Almost photography made frame by frame uh, in a camera obscura. So there is this attempt to really go back to the origin of what is the production of an object, an image, a film, and we will see also a very uh, humorous, though uh, quite primitive embrace, or archaic embrace of drawing. You will also see that in this exhibition, in terms of film, in the film part of the exhibition, that they cover a very broad range of uh, both style and subject matter. Uh, you will see a filmic experiment that, as I mentioned, are very close to science. But not your uh, science museum science. Science with, uh, with humor. Science with also a sense, a time of absurdity, with a lot of humor, as if they were trying to solve problems that don't even exist. As I mentioned earlier, there is this exploration of a notion of cosmos, of nature. They actually are fascinated by a concept that they made yours of abyssology, as a science of what is invisible. Thus, again, their interest in the eye, the camera, as an apparatus that record, project, remember, create an image. They're also very interested in uh, almost recreating early modernist experiment, abstract experiment in film. You will see uh, abstract film that in many ways might remind us of, let's say, early 20th century Fernand Léger uh, uh, ballet mechanique, where uh, they are trying, as Léger was doing, to push the possibility of the medium, almost the pictoriality of the medium to the extreme. And all of that, again, with both an absurd, quote-unquote, absurd sense of the necessity of invention and creativity.